it's Beauty Junkie. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm getting into categorizing my skincare of 2021. So I'm going to share what my favorites are of the year, my so-so mediocre products, and then the products that I'm just not using are kind of disappointed in. And I'm going to get into all the details. We have cleansers, masks, moisturizers, serums, all kinds of things. And this is a part of a series I've been doing. I did three separate videos for makeup. This time for skincare, it's all in one video. So let's get into my favorite skincare of 2021. Now, just to clarify, not all this stuff is new to 2021. This is just skincare I use, skincare that's in my collection. Starting with my favorite cleansers. I have many. <laughs> I have a lot of cleansers in my collection and honestly I use all of them not all at once every day or anything like that but when the right time arrives I use these cleansers and first I want to talk about my tried and true Jordan Samuel I have three of versions of his cleansers I have the after show treatment cleanser this is a makeup remover oil cleanser but it has a very light texture I really love it I do recommend though if you're wearing a lots of makeup to use a microfiber cloth with it to make sure everything is removed the matinee gel cleanser from Jordan Samuel is another favorite of mine all of these cleansers are repeat purchases for me the matinee gel cleanser is what I use Usually at nighttime as my second cleanser. Um, it's really gentle, really nice texture, absolutely love. And then for my morning cleanser, I have been using the Matinee Cream Cleanser, which is a lot more gentle, hydrating. I wouldn't use it as a makeup remover, but you can if you use it multiple times. I just use it as my cleanser in the morning to just remove oil and sweat from the night before. So loving the texture of this. A new cleanser for me is from IS Clinical, the Cleansing Complex. I bought the large size recently and I have been really enjoying it. This is a deep cleanse, a good second step cleanser um, after I've removed my makeup just to make sure everything is off my face. I think it's a really good deep cleaning gel cleanser. When I just want a little something more from my second cleanse, I've been loving this one. It is a little bit um, stripping. I, it is, you know, a deep cleanser. I wouldn't use it every single day and I don't, but um, it's just gonna depend on your skin type, how often you wanna use this. For a makeup remover, one that I have been consistently reaching for is the Deviant Skincare Cleansing Concentrate. This one is with the blue tansy, this bottle. <laughs> It's kind of wrecked. I have it in the shower. Even though you're not supposed to wash your face in the shower. I definitely do. And I have been using this up quite a bit. Hopefully you can see that. Um, I love the texture, the smell of it. It is definitely luxurious. It's fairly expensive. I mean, there's a lot of cleansing bombs out there, but this one is really nice and something I always want to reach for. I don't know that I'll repurchase it, but I do enjoy it quite a bit. And that is it for cleansers in my favorite category. I want to move into masks. So for masks, um, I don't use them very often, each one of these. Like this one I use once a week. It's my exfoliating mask that I enjoy. Um, it is the Oskaya London Renaissance Mask Nutra Active and Resurfacing Mask. This is a nice, interesting take on an exfoliating type of mask because it is very oily. Hopefully you guys can see the texture here. And it doesn't dry out my skin, um, but it's really easy to kind of leave on for a little bit too long. Um, it's lasting me quite a while, and when you rub it in, it turns white. I feel like there's a, a few things about it that could be a little bit better, um, so I... I have another exfoliating mask that I kind of just opened and only used a couple times really that will eventually replace this one and I'll go ahead and talk about that one right now. It's the Biologique Recherche Mask Vivant, very popular mask from the brand. It is like a brown mask that kind of smells bad. 
You can mix other masks with it. You can mix baking soda with it. It is a, not just an exfoliating mask, more of a purifying mask. It says rebalancing. Um, some people think this is a really good anti-aging mask as well. This is gonna be for skin types that can handle a mask like this. So maybe acne prone, but not super sensitive. I do have sensitive skin, so I do have to be careful about how long I leave it on for. And I'm probably better off mixing something in with this, like a clay mask to help kind of balance it out a little bit. Um, the, but this isn't gonna be for everyone and definitely don't use it too many times a week. Um, it does kind of harden and um, dry down really well. It doesn't stay um, wet. Um, but I really enjoy it. I think it works really well. I think it's one of their star products. Another mask. This one is firming and I just got a larger size of it. This is the Chantecaille Bio Lifting Mask. And I feel like I can really feel it kind of firming up my face. I definitely feel like it kind of dries down and sucks things in a little bit. You do get that firming feeling, which I like. I You can leave this on for a short period of time or you can leave it on overnight. I leave it on overnight um, and I've been really enjoying it. As I said, I got the bigger size of this. Um, I think the skincare from Chantagai, at least from what I've tried, seems to be really nice. Another mask that I use that I treat more like a special occasion, a moisturizer from Biologique Recherche Cream Mask Vernix. So this is the old, I don't know if they're reformulating this, but I believe this is the original formula. Um, just wanna put that out there for any time I mention Biologique Recherche. Sometimes they reformulate stuff. But this one is a really, on the thicker side, kind of deep moisturizer. It's supposed to be used as a mask, so you rinse it off, but a lot of people use it and leave it on all night, overnight, as a nighttime cream. It really locks in the moisture. It kind of leaves a a waxy kind of residue. Um, you want to be careful how much you use with this because if you are prone to breaking out, kind of, it kind of leaves a little bit of a film, a layer, but sometimes you need that in the winter. I really like it, but I don't use it like too many times a week, maybe once or twice. That's it for my mask favorites. Now I'm going to move on to a makeup remover. I mentioned this in several videos, the Clinique Take the Day Off Makeup Remover for Eyes and Lips. Um, this has been part of my skincare routine probably since, I don't know, middle school or high school. Um, one of my favorite makeup removers. It's a really good value. This is 200 mils and you can get it on sale a lot, less than 20 bucks. I really enjoy this one. I think it works really well. And for me, what's most important is it doesn't sting my eyes which a lot of makeup removers for eye area do sting, um, but this one doesn't. But not to say that it's not, it's gonna work for absolutely everyone. You always wanna try out a new product before you you know, commit to buying like a huge size. You might wanna try a little sample. Let's get into serums. I have a couple that I am really loving. This one is from Lyra Clinical. This is Biohydra infusion with PSC. Now this is like a hyaluronic, really liquidy type of serum that really juices up and plumps up the skin really quickly. It's pretty potent, pretty powerful. I get this online through a spa and I have really been impressed with this brand. Honestly, I've a lot of the things that I've tried from this brand I've really liked. And this is definitely one of those serums that absolutely is incredible. Definitely recommend one of the best hyaluronic acid serums I've ever tried. It's just, you can feel the difference. You can see the difference on your skin with this one. Another serum that I just purchased from Sephora actually, and I've tried other versions of these serums in the past. They do kind of reformulate pretty regularly. This version isn't quite what I remember it to be. Um, this is the Sulwusu First Care Activating Serum. This is like an essence step. So you can use this like right after you cleanse or tone and put this on as like your first moisture layer. 
I use this first and then do the Lyra Clinical second. And it's just a really incredible sort of get your skin prepared for the next step type of serum. And it, your skin just soaks it up really quickly, makes it feel good. Um, it does have slight tackiness while it's drying down, but it does have a strong herbal ginseng smell. This whole brand smells like that, so you want to just kind of try it out. Um, but this, the ginseng in here and this product is not as heavy as like the creams or the eye creams, for example. But loving this, and it comes in 60 mils, which is like double the size of a normal serum, um, but it is fairly expensive. Onto moisturizer. This is one that I discovered this year. I haven't tried this moisturizer until now. This is from Jordan Samuel until this year, actually. The Jordan Samuel Performance Cream. Now this is kind of a basic, somewhat boring moisturizer. There's not like a lot of bells and whistles with it. But sometimes that's all you want on your skin, especially if you feel like there's a lot going on with your skin. It's a very basic kind of lightweight cream and it just does what it's supposed to do, which is moisturize your skin. It's not going to give you anything extra, any anti-aging or brightening benefits or anything like that, but it does, it's fairly simple but it does a good job probably for most times out of the year. Now, if you're in winter, you have really dry skin, you might not want to add an oil to it or something else, a serum to make you happy. But I think for most people, a lot of people are gonna be happy with the consistency of this cream. For eye cream, I have two that are in my rotation. So one I use in the morning this is the Jordan Samuel Performance Eye Gel, another product that I tried this year for the first time. It's a really nice lightweight gel. A little bit goes a long way. It's clear with like the slightest, I want to say like a slight amount of shimmer. Like you probably can't see it, but it is there and it's just a nice lightweight under makeup, under concealer kind of gel. And it's not gonna like do everything. There's no eye cream that's gonna like remove your bags or your wrinkles or your discoloration, but I feel like it just kind of juices up the under eye area and prepares it for makeup or whatever. I just like the way it feels. I think you could certainly layer cream, cream on top of it. You just wanna be careful like how much you're putting underneath your eyes cause you can, too much moisture, you can develop little bumps. Milia, so. Want to avoid that my nighttime eye cream that you can also use around your lips that is very messy right now it has a metal tip applicator which helps with puffiness this is the biologique recherche cream contour you at livres biofixine this is a, a typical kind of creamy eye cream that i find to be really nice texture it's not too light it's not too heavy um, I think I've, I've been using it pretty consistently. I think it does help with my lines a little bit. Nothing is going to fill them in or fix them, but it definitely helps hydrate my eye area. I take it up here all the way under here and you can store this in the fridge to make it even cooler. I also have a retinol cream that I use about once a week, probably this time of year. I could get away with using it twice a week, um, but it does. If I use it too much, it does kind of make my skin peel a little bit. It's really potent. This is the Crystal Retinol 6 from Medicaid. So this is, I think it's 0.06% retinol. Um, it is over the counter encapsulated, encapsulated retinol. So it is over the counter and I think it does kind of help turn over your skin, which retinol, you know, helps with that faster turnover skin, which is to help with aging and fine lines and wrinkles. Retinol is proven to kind of do that. Anyway, I like the formula of it. While it does kind of peel my skin if I use it a lot, it's not as dramatic as the prescription strength stuff. So I like that aspect to it. And I like that I don't have to get a prescription to be honest. They have different levels. You can go lower. I actually got the one level recently from 
my Black Friday sale purchase. So I'm going to be going down a step, but I do like this brand Medicaid. Wanted to mention a couple favorite tools in my skincare th accessories in my collection. These are the Intrinsics Naturally Soft Fiber Blend Silken Wipes. Now you can use these for toner, removing mascara, whatever. You can honestly make your own mask with these little wipes and they are very much gauze-like, really soft. You can unravel them and make them like a really thin layer. Um, I get these from where I buy my Biologic Recherche um, and they are kind of expensive, but I think they work really well. <laughs> I mean, they're, they're so much better than your basic like cotton ball. So I like these. I know they're not the best for the environment, but I feel like they just work better than some of the reusable stuff out there. Last but not least in my favorites category is this microfiber towel. I don't, I don't know if, so I have some from Jordan Samuel. He sells them, although they're often sold out, but I think I also got some from Amazon that do just a good a job. You know, you basically want to look for like a facial grade microfiber cloth. One side that's a little bit more gentle, one that's a little bit thicker. Um, you just want to be careful about overdoing it with the physical exfoliations, which is what kind of happens when you use these. But like I was saying with a kind of oil cleanser, you want to use this first and the the best way to make sure it's all removed is to remove the product with this damp towel and just kind of go over it and make sure everything's removed. That's the best way to remove makeup, but you can kind of overdo it with the rubbing on the towel. So you just want to be really gentle with these, but they work super well. You can rewash them, good for the environment. You're not using a face wipe, which is not great for your skin. And these are really handy. Sorry, one more. Forgot to mention sunscreen very important, right in front of me, very orange, compared to mostly black and white skincare. This is from a Pew Pure Block Daily Sun Cream SPF 45. And this is a multiple repeat purchase for me, um, especially because it comes in this larger size, which is 100 mLs. A lot of sunscreens from Asia, Korea, Japan, South Korea, they are 50 mils or smaller, so I love that the size of this. I think it does a decent job of blocking out the sun. It is chemical. It does smell like citrus. So there are a couple negatives for a lot of people, but it just have been my tried and true facial sunscreen. I don't really use it on my body because it is somewhat pricey, but no, I, for me, I don't get a white cast. I love the texture of it multiple favorite year in year out okay now on to my more so-so skincare skincare that i'm still figuring out or i just don't quite hate or love it's just in the middle okay <laughs> so i don't have as many products in this category but let's start with start with masks i don't have any cleansers in this category so this is Biologie Recherche Mask Visuolastine Plus. I don't know if this has been reformulated. This bottle is, I'm sure, expired because this stuff only lasts nine months. So definitely expired. Actually, it only expired in October. So that's not too bad. But anyway, I think I opened it more than nine months ago. This is a hydrating face mask and I felt like it wasn't quite as wet as I expected it to be. It's, it's got a lot of clay in it. While I enjoy it, I don't find myself wanting to use it that often or reaching for it because I quite, don't quite feel like it hydrates as much as I want it to. Um, this is a good mask to, to mix with Mask Vivant if you're looking for something to kind of balance things out. Um, but it's not something I would repurchase. It's not terrible, but it's not quite what I expected it to be. This is a sheet mask that I really enjoy, but um, I think for a sheet mask for me, what really helps me really love it is if it fits my face. And this one, 
like many masks, I have a hard time with the bridge of my nose. And so when the bridge doesn't fit, then the eyes don't fit. And that's what I really love about face masks is like the cooling effect underneath my tired eyes. This is the pop-up recipe Bombi honey mask. I purchased this mask multiple times. Um, it's one of my favorite kind of Asian beauty masks. I find it to be super hydrating, but the, and it has honey in it, which calms my red skin. I find the effects to be temporary, so it's not in my favorites, but I do enjoy it when I remember to use it. Let's get into toners. So this is a pretty gentle toner for how many different active ingredients are in it. This is the Deviant Skincare Gentle Resurfacing Liquid. A lot of you guys recommended this to me um, because I couldn't really handle the Biologique Recherche P50 toner. While I do like it, I feel like I can't have too many exfoliating things in my routine, so I use this very rarely um, when I remember or really feel like I need to use it. Um, I love the glass bottle. It's actually really dark blue, which I did not realize. It has lactic acid, mandelic, salicylic, green tea, licorice root, 100 mils. It's Deviant skincare is a little bit harder to get. You can only order it online, and I think for what it is, it doesn't make my skin overreact, which is really nice. It's just toners and exfoliators are something that I cannot reach for like that often. Facial sprays. So this was used to be in my like never use category <laughs> or, you know, I've done videos like skincare I'm not really using. And this has always been in it, but I have found now that I have the heater on, it's really dry, it's winter. And a lot of you guys told me like you use these kinds of mists to kind of after you shower and wash your face, your skin kind of dries out and you use it to re-wet it and then put your like serums on and then those serums help trap in the water that's on your face from this. This I find to actually feel like it's it's actually hydrating my skin. It doesn't feel like just plain water on my face. This is the Josh Rosebrick Hydrating Accelerator Moisturizing Facial Mist. That is a mouthful. It's at Ulta. It does smell like lavender, which I don't love, which is why it's probably in this category. It's just not something I use all year long, but in the winter, I like it. Um, it is fairly expensive, but I do have found a way to use it more in my routine, especially at night when it's been a couple hours since I've showered, haven't put my skincare on, a nice little refresh, then do all the steps. It actually helps kind of trap in the moisture that this gives. All right, couple of serums. This one is not bad. This is an eye serum, has caffeine in it. It's from Typology, 5%. It's just not something I think about layering underneath my eye gel. It, it's fairly simple. It doesn't do a whole lot. I'm not sure I really need it in my routine, but I guess if I felt like I was looking super puffy, I would reach for this because it, it absorbs into the skin. It's really thin. It's a nice f formulated product. It's just not something I reach for a lot. This is a new product to me and I, ha I think I'm liking it. <laughs> My opinions are still forming on this one. This is the Future Cosmetics Boutique Beauty Drops number one. This is like a hydrating, thicker serum, slightly oily. I feel like it helps trap in the moisture. It's like kind of an oil, but kind of not. I actually prefer this over the Biologique Recherche oily serums that they have, the finishing serums. I like this a little bit better, it's less pricey, but I kind of feel like if I use this every day, it might break me out. So I use it sparingly, but I like the way that it feels. It's not too thick, not too oily. This next one, you can't really see the label, Rene Rouleau Anti-Bump Serum, I think is what it's called. It's basically for mask knee, chin acne, you can use it anywhere, it's a clear serum. I think it has salicylic acid in it. It's really thin, so it's easy to apply, but I feel like, I don't know if it's quite necessary to like spend this much money on this kind of a acne product. You have to use it several times for it to really kind of dry out your pimples. 
so it's not like super amazing but I'm glad that I have it kind of in my back pocket in case I really have a bad breakout. This is a moisturizer that I did a whole kind of a, a, a whole rant and a whole video on. By the Jake Rocher's Cream Dermo Pure Fiante. This is a moisturizer that has been reformulated that is very different than what it used to be. I don't hate it. I'm learning to appreciate it. I use it pretty regularly, especially in the mornings when I want something lighter and more gel-like. It's a very, you know, thin kind of gel-like pudding texture. It's not bad. I think a lot of people would actually enjoy it if you have never tried the old formula. I just wish it was a little bit better, a little bit thicker, a little bit more emollient and creamy and not so gel-like, but I get why it is gel-like because it is for acne prone skin. Usually they want something a little bit lighter, people with that kind of skin. Um, and I kind of have a combo face. I do get a lot of breakouts, but I don't know. Maybe when I finish the bottle, I'll change my mind on this one. And then for tools in the kind of so-so category, I picked, purchased these reusable kind of cloths, bamboo makeup remover kind of wipes. And these are washable. They're from Typology. I think I just have to really get used to the washing concept. I think for me, because I don't have my own washing machine, I can't wash my stuff that often. And honestly, like, it's fine for like cleaning off makeup brushes. I think that's one of the best uses for this kind of products for, you know, a reusable wipe. But when I use this, when I, you know, take off my eye makeup, I feel like I have to use so much product and it just soaks up too much. It just, it doesn't have, it doesn't do a great job of removing my eye makeup and you certainly, you can't use this by itself and expect to remove like waterproof anything or glitter eyeliner. Like you need to use some sort of oil cleanser that's safe for the eyes or eye makeup remover with it. And I feel like it just soaks up a little bit too much um, product that like you're just soaking it with tons of oil to get it to work. So I think if it was, you know, made a little bit differently with that in mind, I would like it more. I like the concept of it. I don't really like, you know, throwing, you know, creating more trash with my, you know, disposable makeup wipes. But I feel like it's honestly the best and most efficient way to remove makeup on my eye area. Now, the rest of my face, I definitely use a cleanser. I use my hands or a washable towel, but the same doesn't quite apply to the kind of makeup that goes on your eyes. It's, a, it's different, it's just different. So I want to like these, but um, I only really use them for a specific purpose, which is to clean off makeup brushes with. I think that's it for my mediocre stuff. On to the more mm, disappointing or stuff that I'm not really reaching for, and I'll give you the reasons why. I hope, you know, the opinions I say on this video are, don't offend you. I'm sorry if I'm hating on a product that you really love. But some things just don't work for me. So let's get into this category. And I don't have any cleansers in here. So let's start with masks again. So this is Mask VIP 02 from Biologique Recherche. Another like almost out mask really. And I have used this one with Mask Vivant around the eyes and mixed it in. It is nice, but I feel like it doesn't do a whole lot in terms of brightening. It says oxygenating mask. I'm not sure what it really does, <laughs> to be honest. I mean, it feels nice on the skin. It's really creamy. It's a white cream. It's thick. But I feel like it doesn't really super brighten when I put it around my eyes. Like, it's, I don't see, like, a noticeable difference. And I know that's a little bit hard to measure or see, but I don't know. I, it's not something I would pick up again. And I will note, this is pretty expired. It says it expires this month, but I've had it open over six months for sure. The texture definitely changes when it's expired. It gets very lumpy. Another mask is for the eyes that I think overall it's not a bad product. These are like eye gel patches from Jae Jun. 
J. Jun Green Tea Gel Eye Patch made in Korea. I believe there's 30 in here. No, there's 60. So 30 pairs. You know, it does the job of any other kind of eye patch, except for the green tea flakes kind of come off on your skin. Most of us don't want to wash our face after, you know, we use something like this, but if you have little green bits, it's not cute. So I, I don't like that it, that part comes off. Kind of makes me not want to use it, to be honest. So that's a, just a little bit disappointing. Another mask kind of product where the label has come off. This is Strivectin, and this is, I think, the, like, advanced neck cream. I got this at Costco. Um, I, I don't like super love the texture. I don't find it very easy to apply. It's just like really kind of thick and like isn't like super fast absorbing. It's just, it doesn't smell like anything. It doesn't smell good. But when you're putting it like in this area, I don't know. I just, I'm not a fan of it. I'm sure if I used it all up and used it every day, I'd probably see some, my tech neck line kind of uh, filling in maybe, but I just don't like, I should just get rid of this. It was like almost a hundred dollars though for this expensive neck cream. I just can't get into it. It's not my favorite texture. All right, so it's toner. I know. Lotion P50. V1970. I think I've used like, I don't know, this much of it. Still in my collection because it's expensive. Um, if I feel like I really need to exfoliate my skin, I'll use this every once in a while. It's still really strong for my skin. I think I'm gonna have to go with the, the weakest one next time and hopefully they have a small bottle. I can just try it out. This is like too much for me. Just my skin gets red. I know you have to ease into it just like um, a retinol or any kind of product. Your skin has to like get used to this kind of thing. It's just hard. It's a hard start for me to like really love this. Next is another mist. Jordan Samuel, Hydrate the Mist. I feel like this is water and that's kind of it. I know that it's not, it has other ingredients like glycerin. I think it's the, the sprayer that's really like large that just kind of spurts out a lot. And it doesn't quite feel as hydrating as my other mists. So bottom category, a serum that is for acne, Biologique Recherche Complex Herberol. I feel like this is a really slow working serum for acne. acne. When you have acne, you want it to work fast. I feel like I would have to apply this all the time for it to like prevent acne almost like every day for it to like really work. It's just too slow for me. But I guess if you have very oily skin, you can kind of handle the dryness, the daily <laughs> dryness of this. I just feel like it. it's not quite for me. Um, some other exfoliating products. We're going a little bit out of order here. Drunk Elephant TLC Frambus, Frambus Glycolic Night Serum. I've tried this before, gone through a whole bottle. My, you know, sibling gave it to me, I think last Christmas. Haven't really used it. I think it works pretty nicely. It's pretty strong. 12% AHA BHA blend. There's a lot of uh, strong exfoliators out there that are much less expensive. This is a pleasant texture. I mean, if you really like Drought Elephant, I'm sure you'll like this. And you know, I'm sure you'll, you know, explain to yourself that it, it's worth it. I just personally don't think it is because these kinds of ingredients are not super expensive but they can be pricey you know some brands make them real pricey another exfoliating product that I haven't used because I think it's might be too strong for me uh, this was another gift that I got dr. Dennis gross alpha beta universal daily peel I know a lot of people love this this is 30 treatments and it says if you want flawless perfectly balanced smooth skin immediate radiance this is you got to be really careful with this stuff like you don't want to use it every day it's pretty strong I don't know Maybe I should use this on my body or something. On my feet. On the bottom of my feet. Um, I haven't really used this. 
another Christmas gift that's now that you've gone by a year has gone by I haven't used it um, I just have to be careful with my skin that's all a couple of moisturizer kinds of things this is a sample this is not something I bought Charlotte Tilbury magic cream um you know seems to have good reviews some people really love it I could see maybe using this as a primer it's kind of got the La Mer kind of vibe to it. It's not really the same, but it kind of smells like a grandma. I just find the texture to be a little bit much. Like I get it's it's a as a cream you can use every day. I, I could see using this maybe at night because it's pretty thick. Um, I could see using it as a primer if you, you know, can get a little bit to go a long way, but I could, I just, it feels kind of greasy. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. I'm not in love with the texture of it. It feels heavy. So I'm not a fan of that. Uh, this product I've mentioned before, I think I like the idea of it. The texture is weird to me. Glossier Future Dew Oil Serum Hydro Hybrid. This is kind of a makeup, not makeup, primer, glow thing. This feels really thick and heavy and makes me not want to put it on my face. It smells like it's it doesn't have a scent, but it doesn't smell good. <laughs> uh, very chemical-like and I find it to kind of be too much. Like if you're going with no makeup, I think maybe you would appreciate this. But I would not want to put this underneath my makeup. I think it's like a little bit much and I think I just use one pump. I imagine you would use one pump on your face, maybe half. It just feels like it could be a lighter. I want it to be really lightweight and it's not. So that kind of makes me feel a little bit disappointed, but I think if you like to be really hydrated, you have drier skin, you might like this, but for me, combo, no thank you. Okay, last thing I want to talk about is a tool that I wish I really enjoyed using. <laughs> This is the new face. This is the least expensive one. It has, there's no way to do attachments. It's just kind of for the face. And how they get you is you have to repurchase the gel, which makes this work. Otherwise it, I think for me, my skin's too sensitive. I can really feel this on my skin, even with the gel, even with a lot of gel. Um, I think the way it works, it takes more time than five minutes every night, so it's kind of a really big commitment to use this. I think if you do use it, I'm sure you'll see results, especially with the gel. It has like hydrating ingredients in it. So if you're using a hydrating gel liberally at night, all over your face, most nights of the week, I think you're going to see a difference, okay? Now, does it kind of lift? I think it, it kind of does. I didn't see a huge difference, but I didn't like commit to it for super long. You just have to know if you can stick to a routine, to be honest, to get the most out of these kinds of products. But the gel, I think it for me is the problem because it dries down so fast on my skin that I have to have a sprayed bottle of water nearby to reactivate it so that I don't have to keep applying gel on top of gel. Also, like, you can do one section at a time, like half your neck, apply gel, put this on, put it down, apply more gel to this section, put it on. It's just a lot of movement, and I don't have time for that. It's like a process, and if you love your nighttime process in your bathroom, it's a ritual. Maybe you're taking a bath, you can do this. You can be on your phone and reading and kind of, like, lighting it. I know people use it and they love it. It's just, I don't love the way it works with the gel, to be honest. Like the routine of it for me is like too annoying. Um, and honestly, I just need to lose weight under here and I probably would be happy. Um, maybe when I'm older, I'll want to use this more, but anyway, I do positive thing about it. It holds its charge really long like I don't think I've charged it since I bought it last year earlier this year I think I charged it once so and I used it like for a while pretty regularly so I'm impressed with the charge that it holds it's pretty good um but you can adjust like the 
current. I probably could make it lower. I just feel like oh, that's going to take even longer for it to work on me. I don't know. I, I, I really feel the current on me and I, I don't like that. It, it's not like it's not painful <laughs> on me, at least personally. All right. I think I covered everything I'm looking in front of me to make sure I didn't miss anything. I think those are the highlights of what I have in my collection. These are things that some of it you can tell I use all the time and some of it not so much, but I don't want to declutter and get rid of because, you know, they're still somewhat nice products, even though they have their downsides. Um, you can see a trend that I do like certain brands. I have to say on this channel, I really got into Biologic Recherche and a lot of you and have watched my videos, not a lot, but some of you have watched my videos and uh, kind of went along the journey with me. I have backed off from buying a lot from that brand. One, it's fairly expens expensive. There's a lot of trial and error at a high cost. Also the reformulating the brand. Um, but I think overall, like I feel like it's best unless like a new skincare product comes out that like I really want to try and you guys want me to try. I'm not like wanting to rush out, at least right now, I'm wanting to rush out and get new skincare to add to my routine because I feel like I already have a lot of products going on. I'm liking what I'm using. Now, if I run out of a serum or a moisturizer, of course I can check out what else is out there, what's new that I want to pick up. But I think before in my channel, I was just picking up like random things just because I've always wanted to try it which isn't the best for my skin because when you add a whole bunch of new things, it can kind of create some chaos and you don't know what's kind of affecting your skin when you're trying a whole bunch of new things at once. But I do enjoy skincare. I think as I've gotten older, I've seen the importance of routines and keeping up with them and staying out of the sun for sure. You can see a difference on people's skin. You can, I can see it on mine. I'm always going to have some acne scars and acne down here. That's just what happens. I'm going to have some pigmentation here. I have fair skin. But, you know, I can do what I can to avoid those things um, the best I can without going crazy. Um, skincare can definitely be an obsession. But I definitely have put a lot more money into my skincare. I think it's more important than makeup, but it's just hard to put out a lot of content on skincare, to be honest, just because in order for me to try a product, it takes a while for me to get, have an opinion really. So most of my skincare videos are like first impressions. Sometimes I'll, you know, update you guys in, in the middle of using products. And then when I have an empty bottle, then I can tell you my full opinion, but it takes time and I can't, like I know some people that's all they talk about is skincare. I don't know how they like, how their skin like handles using that many different products all the time. I think at some point I would not enjoy doing that. Um, so I'm just, you know, going slow with introducing new products, use trying to use things up that I like, repurchasing things that I like, especially the cleansers. You'll see I repeat purchase. Jordan Samuel a lot, but I am opening to, to trying a new cleanser every once in a while. I think it's easy to go through cleans cleansers quickly. So it's, it's a, it's a good product if you kind of want to branch out to experiment with. That's why I like picked up something new finally, but you know, I still go back to my tried and true too in my routine. So anyways, that's it for this video. Let me know what you guys are loving or not loving in 2021 for skincare. Please comment below. If you like this video, click the thumbs up, subscribe, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye guys.